Hello everyone, welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. Last video, we covered electrical safety standards and terminology. In this video, we will cover medical instrument class. Let's begin with Class 1's equipment. Class 1 equipment has a protective earth. The basic means of protection is the insulation between live parts and expose conductive parts, such as the metal enclosure. In the event of a fault that would otherwise cause an exposed conductive part to become live, the supplementary protection, i.e. the protective earth, comes into effect. A large fault current flows from the mains part to earth via the protective earth conductor which causes a protective device, usually a fuse in the main circuit, to disconnect the equipment from the supply. It is important to realize that not all equipment having an earth connection is necessarily class one. The earth conductor may be for functional purposes only, such as screening. In this case, the size of the conductor may not be large enough to safely carry a fault current that would flow in the event of a main short to earth for the length of time required for the fuse to disconnect the supply. Further confusion can arise due to the use of plastic laminates for finishing equipment. A case that appears to be plastic does not necessarily indicate that the equipment is not class one. There is no agreed symbol in use to indicate that the equipment is class one and it is not mandatory to state on the equipment itself that it is class one. Where any doubt exists, reference should be made to equipment manuals. Let's move towards class two equipments. The method of protection against electric shock in the case of class two equipment is either double insulation or reinforced insulation. In double insulated equipment, the basic protection is afforded by the first layer of insulation. If the basic protection fails, then supplementary protection is provided by a second layer of insulation, preventing contact with live parts. In practice, the basic insulation may be afforded by physical separation of live conductors from the equipment enclosure, so that the basic insulation material is air. The enclosure material then forms the supplementary insulation. Reinforced insulation is defined in standards as being a single layer of insulation, offering the same degree of protection against electric shock as double insulation. Class II medical electrical equipment should be fused at the equipment end of the supply lead in either mains conductor or in both conductors if the equipment has a functional earth. Let's move on to the class three equipments. Class three equipment is defined in some equipment standards as that in which protection against electric shock relies on the fact that no voltages higher than safety extra low voltage, SELV are present. SELV is defined in turn in the relevant standard as a voltage not exceeding 25 volts AC or 60 volts DC. In practice, such equipment is either battery operated or supplied by an SELV transformer. If battery operated equipment is capable of being operated when connected to the mains, for example, for battery charging, then it must be safely tested as either class one or class two equipment. Similarly, Equipment powered from an SELV transformer should be tested in conjunction with a transformer as class one or class two equipment as appropriate. It is interesting to note that the current IEC standards relating to the safety of medical electrical equipment do not recognize class three equipment since limitation of voltage is not deemed sufficient to ensure safety of the patient. All medical electrical equipment that is capable of mains connection must be classified as class one or class two. Medical electrical equipment having no mains connection is simply referred to as 
internal powered. I hope this video helps you to understand the different classes of medical devices. In next video, we will cover up the equipment type and classification. Please subscribe and share the video. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.